Tigers are the largest cat in the world and can grow to 3.3 meters or 11 feet long and weigh up to 360 kilograms or 790 pounds. They use their massive size and strength to take down medium and large prey, such as deer, antelope, and buffalo. Despite their huge size, tigers can run at 40 miles per hour, leap 26 feet across, and jump 16 feet into the air. They are solitary hunters and primarily stalk their prey from behind before pouncing on it. They use their powerful jaws and sharp canines to bite the animal's neck or the back of the head. They often kill their prey with a single bite, severing the spinal column, crushing its skull, or suffocating it. Tigers are nocturnal hunters. Their ability to see well in the dark comes down to them having a tapetum lucidum in the back of their eyes. This acts like a mirror, reflecting more light back into their eyes, enabling them to see in low light. It gives them night vision six times better than that of a human. There are five subspecies of tiger, the Bengal tiger, the Indochinese tiger, the Sumatran tiger, the Amur or Siberian tiger, and the South China tiger, which is now thought to be extinct in the wild. They are native to Asia and are found in Southeast Asia, India, some Russian regions, and Western China. They occupy a range of habitats from tropical forests, savannas, and grasslands, to evergreen forests, mangroves, and rocky terrain. Each subspecies has adaptations to thrive in its chosen habitat. For instance, Siberian tigers have much thicker fur, more fur on their paws, and an extra layer of fat than other tigers. This helps them endure extreme cold and temperatures as low as minus 40 degrees. The darker coat of the Sumatran tiger, smaller body size, and longer whiskers all help it to survive in the dense jungle of Sumatra. Despite differences between the six subspecies of tiger, they all prefer habitats in close proximity to water, plentiful prey, and foliage. But what if tigers hunted in packs? Would any of this change? And if so, what? In the wild, tigers compete for food with other predators such as leopards, wolves, bears, and crocodiles. Although these species rarely cross paths, if tigers hunted in packs, this may change. In fact, the whole ecosystem could change if tigers became group hunters. They already take down large prey. Maybe they would target large prey more often. Numbers of deer, antelope, and buffalo could come under pressure as the success of tiger kills grew. Currently, solitary tigers can be successful in only one of 20 hunting attempts. Hunting in a group generally results in greater success, even if it means the kill must be shared out. Wolves also hunt and kill large ungulates. They take down deer, musk oxen, elk, and moose. These kills are enough to feed the entire wolf pack. If tigers began hunting more successfully, they could impose significant pressure on wolf populations. Today, the tiger's habitat is conducive to hunting alone, stalking prey in dense foliage, and tree cover is easier for single predators. In Africa, a pride of lions takes advantage of open grasslands and savannas. They can hone in on their prey from multiple angles and target large herds of wildebeest or antelope grazing in the open. If tigers became group hunters, they could diversify their habitat and geographical range. They may leave the density of the forests and jungles and head to more open ground. This, in turn, may lead to them targeting different prey species. The herbivores that typically graze the open grasslands could come under strain, which could result in changes to the local flora. In turn, species that rely on this habitat and its flora may be affected. Over generations, tigers hunting in packs could become smaller in size. They wouldn't need to be so big, heavy, and strong individually if they had the support of the pack. Furthermore, it would be easier to feed the group if the individuals were smaller in size. Feeding five hungry tigers, each weighing over 700 pounds, would be challenging. Tigers can consume 40 kilograms, or 88 pounds of meat in one sitting. They typically require one deer-sized kill each week to sustain them. They would need to be constantly hunting to provide enough food for the group to survive, or solely rely on larger buffalo kills. 
prey may also change and adapt to the danger of group hunting tigers. They may develop their evasive strategies such as feeding at different times throughout the day or night, grazing closer together, appointing a sentry, moving in sparser groups, or changing habitats. Of course, they already adopt some of these behaviors, but it is interesting to consider how changes in an apex predator can have a cascading effect along the food chain. If hunting in groups, tigers' social behavior would change. They would need to develop key communication skills to coordinate hunts. Lionesses, hunting in prides, usually communicate using visual cues. The lead lioness will stare intently at the target prey animal, and the others will follow, locking eyes onto the same animal. Tigers can also use behavior and posture to communicate with one another, such as changes to the positioning of the ears and tail, arching of the back, or opening the mouth wide to expose the canines. They also communicate using vocalizations such as coughs, groans, and roars. They scent mark their territory using a mixture of urine and liquid from the anal glands. The smell from these scent marks can remain for up to 40 days. Communication wouldn't only revolve around actively hunting, they would have to develop a social order as well. During feeding, there would be a hierarchy around the kill. In lions, the highest ranking individuals, such as the alpha male or female, will begin eating the kill, followed by the other adults and then the cubs. If social behavior was to develop in tigers, they may share other activities as well. These activities could include other things, like maintaining territories and raising their young. Lions who protect their territories together are far more likely to succeed in doing so. By securing a territory, they lay claim to the resources in it, such as prey, water, and shelter. Tiger territories can be huge, sometimes a couple of hundred miles in area. Maintaining such a large territory as a solitary animal uses a lot of energy and can end in bloody battles. Working together as a pack would reduce the burden and energy lost covering such ground. This could result in tigers spending more time hunting or raising their young. Lionesses often give birth at similar times. This promotes the creation of a communal support network. Lionesses share the care, protection, and feeding of the pride's cubs. Sometimes mothers will even nurse another's cubs. If tigers became social animals, they could also create nurseries and develop altruistic behaviors for the good of the group. Less than half of all tiger cubs survive beyond their first year. Adopting a communal nursery strategy may improve the outcome for young offspring. However, this doesn't seem to be the case for lions. Incredibly, only 50% of lion cubs survive to adulthood and in some areas, mortality rates can be as high as 80%. This is despite the protection of the pride and communal nursing offered by the lionesses. The main reasons for a high mortality rate are lack of food and intruders. Lion cubs predators include leopards, wild dogs, hyenas, and unrelated male lions. Mortality amongst tiger cubs is often caused by infanticide by male tigers and starvation when separated from the mother. Humans are also devastating tiger populations due to habitat destruction, poaching, use of body parts for traditional medicine, and farming conflicts. Perhaps it is a good thing that tigers are solitary animals, with only 5,000 tigers left in the wild. Coming together in groups would only make them more vulnerable. Tigers have evolved over 2 million years to become one of the most incredible apex predators the modern world has known. They have evolved to become elite solitary hunters, and if it weren't for human impact, they would probably thrive today, as they have done before. Hunting in groups certainly has its advantages for some species, but for the tiger, a life of solitude is the way nature intended. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time. time.